Here we go again, chapter 15, uh, as simple as possible, as direct as possible, anatomy and physiology. In chapter 15, just an only review to help you uh, think about your general practice questions in a slightly different style. And to take a look at this graffiti uh, from our website and perhaps interpret it in a slightly different way. Here's the big and the obvious stuff. We're going to be talking about the autonomic nervous system compared to the somatic nervous system. And we're going to focus our attention in this chapter on this one topic. And that is how in the world do you get a signal from the central nervous system over to the effectors? Now, to simplify things, we're going to talk about getting it from, say, the spinal cord over to the effectors. We're not going to worry about, in this presentation, uh, getting it, say, from the premotor cortex to the uh, motor cortex and down through the brainstem and all that kind of stuff. Nope, we're just going to take it from the spinal cord out to the effector. And here we go. Um, well, got to say something about receptors first. Uh, because it's quick and it's simple, it turns out that here are two basic types of receptors we're going to consider. And those are cholinergic and adrenergic. Now, cholinergic refers to acetylcholine, so it's a pretty good name. Adrenergic refers to norepinephrine and epinephrine, which you might remember uh, used to be called uh, noradrenaline and adrenaline. So the word adrenergic makes more sense. Uh, cholinergic has two subdivisions, two big subdivisions. That's nicotinic and muscarinic. Uh, strangely, these two things were named because of chemicals that reacted here. So in doing the research, they found that nicotine responds to this kind of cholinergic receptor. They call that nicotinic cholinergic receptors. And then there was a chemical found in mushrooms. And so it was called muscarinic cholinergic uh, receptors. And both of these things right here, again, uh, respond to acetylcholine. Down here with the adrenergic receptors, they're divided into alpha and beta, and then further subdivided, say, into alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. And there's a lot of stuff to learn over here, particularly if you ever think about anything in pharmacology, there's a lot of uh, information right here. It's going to be really important to you someday. Okay, down here, let's go for the big and the obvious. The big and obvious is we're going to get a signal, say, from the spinal cord over to an effector. And we're going to talk about the somatic nervous system right here and then the autonomic nervous system down here. Now, the somatic nervous system, which you know is potentially voluntary under direct conscious control, uh, has as its one and only target the skeletal muscle. So uh, look back on our uh, divisions, diagrams of the nervous system. And remember, somatic uh, doesn't have any subdivision, so it's one division it uh, goes to one target muscle and one kind of target skeletal muscle here's the storyline a motor neuron with its cell body inside the central nervous system can send an axon all the way out to the effector one neuron can go all the way out to the effector uh, at the synapse at the effector acetylcholine is the material that's going to be used to send the signal so when it comes around the somatic nervous system, how could it be simpler? Everything's about one. One motor neuron goes the entire distance. There's one kind of effector muscle, one kind of muscle skeletal, and there's one a significant synapse right here and one neural transmitter, acetylcholine. Boom. Okay, down here, the autonomic nervous system. Okay, a lot of things to say. First off, it is divided into two divisions. There's twos all over the same. Two divisions right here. Uh, parasympathetic and sympathetic. Now, they come off the spinal cord or the central nervous system in different locations. The parasympathetic nerves tend to come away from the cranium and the very end of the spinal cord. So it's called a cranial sacral flow. Cranial for above and sacral for below here. Then the sympathetic tends to come off the middle of the spinal cord, so it's called thoracolumbar flow. Immediately, a big difference. Here we go. Uh, it's uh, autonomic nervous system, has two divisions to the thing, and it takes two neurons to get out to the targets. So in the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, two neurons are necessary to get from the central nervous system to the target itself. But let's say something about the targets real quick. There are two targets it can go out to, muscles or glands. And there's two kinds of muscles, cardiac and smooth, and two kinds of glands, exocrine and endocrine. So two, 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 all over the place. Uh, I've taken this box right here and I've drawn it over here. 
Uh, with the parasympathetic, again, the body of the first neuron is located inside the central nervous system. It sends out a long axon over to the effector. Then it synapses with a second uh, motor neuron, which then goes directly to the effector. So it takes two neurons to get to the effector. The first neuron has the longer axon. The second neuron has the shorter one. The two synapse with each other out in the peripheral nervous system, and that area is called a ganglion. And so therefore, the first neuron is called the preganglionic neuron. The second one's called the postganglionic neuron. Now, inside this ganglion right here, at the synapse, acetylcholine is the neural transmitter, and that is a nicotinic receptor. So, two to get out there, and the first one's long, the second one's short, the second one is right there at the surface. Now, at the surface, there's a second synapse. There's two synapses. Acetylcholine is still being used right there, but now the receptor is muscarinic. So, somatic. One neuron, one synapse, one neural transmitter, one kind of target, one kind of muscle as the target. For a parasympathetic, two neurons, two synapses, one neural transmitter, but two different types of receptors. Down to the sympathetic nervous system. And the sympathetic nervous system, well, parasympathetic was long short, sympathetic is short long. The body of the first motor neuron is found inside the central nervous system and it has a short axon which then goes to a ganglion. The ganglion is located near the spinal cord so very often it's called paravertebral sympathetic ganglion where these things synapse with the second neuron. The first one of course is the preganglionic neuron, the second one's the postganglionic neuron. At this first synapse right here, acetylcholine responds to a nicotinic receptor, just like right here. So for the autonomic ganglion, acetylcholine is the neural transmitter there and nicotinic is the receptor. The second sympathetic motor neuron has the long axon and it heads out towards those targets. And at the second synapse, it's norepinephrine that's being used at the synapse. And that is an adrenergic receptor. Okay, so again, for the sympathetic, it takes two. It's short, long. The first one's short. The second one's long. It's got two synapses, and it has two different types of neurotransmitters that's using right there. Now, it is uh, possible for the sympathetic nervous system to use some acetylcholine, but it's in very restricted areas right here. So we aren't going to make a big deal about that. But again, it's short, long, with ACH, acetylcholine, nicotinic receptors in the ganglion. Here's the long axon of the second one. Here are the targets, and for very specific targets, like... Um, blood vessels inside skeletal muscles, and for sweat glands, the sympathetic nervous system can use acetylcholine at a muscarinic receptor. The uh, other way in which the sympathetic nervous system can influence these effectors out there is by using the adrenal medulla. And so therefore, the first motor neuron, the body is found inside the sympathetic, excuse me, it's found inside the central nervous system. It's got a short axon. It goes to the adrenal medulla. There's the synapse where acetylcholine is used. Now, inside the adrenal medulla, there are cells that are glandular in nature, but embryologically, they were perhaps neurons that never developed uh, axons. So this is the equivalent of a ganglion of, of sorts. And so when the acetylcholine is released at these synapses right here, these neurons re release chemicals which would be neurotransmitters if they were released directly into a synapse. But these chemicals are released into the bloodstream. Therefore, they are, by definition then, hormones. And it includes epinephrine and norepinephrine, the same norepinephrine that would have been used up here. Uh, the... Uh, <laughs> The epinephrine and norepinephrine uh, go throughout the body. They react with the synapses uh, at the effectors, and they have the same general effect, fight or flight, as the norepinephrine would up here. Uh, streamlining things dramatically. Hey, here's a word, splanchnik, and the word splanchnik generally refers to digestion. So splanchnik innervation refers to innervation of digestive organs. Divergent and convergent, two very common words we've used before. Divergent means that you spread the signal out. Convergent means you bring the signals back together. And you see the significance of that. 
uh, down here really simplifying. Uh, in the sympathetic nervous system, we said, yeah, in the thracolumbar section right here, the uh, spinal nerves come out with sympathetic signals. They can um, move into the paravertebral sympathetic ganglia and from there send the signals up and down. And they can move out to a group or groups of ganglia, which we won't identify for the sake of the lecture test, uh, although you may have done that in lab. When it comes to the parasympathetic, again, remember it is cranial sacral. So cranial nerves three, seven, nine, and 10 have a lot a parasympathetic signals coming out, particularly 10, the vagus nerve. And then towards the end there, uh, sacral nerves two, three, and four. That's the basic information when it comes around that nerve distribution. And here at last, once again, just a quick comparison between your body's reaction to sympathetic and parasympathetic signals. Whoa. And yeah, okay. Uh, we have said that the parasympathetic nervous system is commonly known as the rest or digest system, the sympathetic as fight or flight. Hmm. And this is a good place to stop for a moment.